and welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Mountain Diana. This is going to be a Nightfall deck with a lot of Invoke. Um, we're going to be playing a Targon Allegiance deck, and that's the Mountain part of our deck. Mountain Scryer, the Targon Allegiance card, 4-man, 2-3. A lot of people play this deck, like this is, this is real similar to um, a, a, getting a pretty popular deck with these cards with Leona. But I honestly just don't think that the Leona adds that much. Like, I, re I really don't. And so we're, we're not going to be playing Leona. Instead, we're going to have a couple, like, two Aurelian Souls at the top end because of how strong that card is. And relying on our Invoke for a lot of our late game. Uh, with Shadow Isles, um, the, the popular version just plays Unspeakable Horror, which is a great card. But I also want Stalking Shadows because Stalking Shadows also is amazing. And it can just work really well with a lot of these cards. Even if like we don't need the ephemeral copy, that gives us another thing we can discard with uh, to Spacey Sketcher, maybe. Um, <clears throat> but you know, finding multiple copies of like these priestesses or multiple copies of Mountain Scryer um, with all this invoke stuff could be really good. So yeah, these games uh, may go a little bit longer. Our deck has a ton of card advantage with all the invoke, but we also have a low curve, so that works well. So we can. Um, you know, like we get to play on the board right away, have a low curve, um, you know, not get ran over by aggro, but still have a lot of card advantage so that we have an awesome late game thanks to all the invoke cards. So that's the plan here. Hey, Death Giva, glad you're liking the Heimerdinger deck from yesterday. Yeah, Heimerdinger looked real good yesterday. Um, yeah, that, that deck was definitely good. All right, we got Yasuo Katarina. So I'm not really playing very much removal. We're kind of relying on... Uh, let's just keep Diana and Mulligan the rest. We're kind of relying on our Invoke to go find removal for us. Not playing the Spacey Sketcher on turn one. This is going to be a Nightfall enabler. And still playing like these other uh, Daybreak cards, because they are good Nightfall enablers, and they're good early blockers. And, um, they're also Targon cards. We want to have as many Targon cards as possible for our Mountain Scryer. We've got just our six Shadow Isle cards. Don't let the fluffy tails fool you. Clad in shining sunlight. All right, I'm going to go right to combat. Yeah, let's go right to combat. And then play the Mountain Scryer afterwards. Sleep is for the guiltless. Darn. Stun two enemies. I'm going to go with the 7-7 seven, seven Overwhelm with Spell Shield. None of those are necessarily bad choices, though. They want to attack with the 4-4 and we block with the 3-2. We can then Unspeakable Horror and kill the Yasuo. Not really expecting that to happen. My, my plan is basically Spacey Sketcher, discard the Hush. That's my plan. Try to keep up. Oh, these are all pretty good. These are all pretty good. One star's whipsy is another spark. If I would have gone with the Moon Silver, I could have gone the Destroyer and Diana this turn. Wow. Got a deny out of their hand for that. What I see. That spell shield's really nice. Now who's got the other hand? I 
guess I should have gone to attacks. I forgot about intimidating roar. No one is promised tomorrow. Huh. I dare you. I suppose that's a thing. I don't think I trade this with Fey Blade Twirler, not whenever I have Hush. Yeah, I really wish I would have just gone right to attacks. Which, that's something just against Yasuo decks in general is usually best to go to open combat because of, you know, Arachnoid Sentries and Yones and all sorts of stuff. And So I definitely should have just done that. No going back. Just gonna pass. Hey, thanks for the raid. We got a huge raid here. 140 people, that's so many. Welcome everybody. We're playing some Ooh. That's pretty good. It's just a nick. <clears throat> that's gonna be pretty good. Alright, we're just gonna have to play the spacey sketcher and discard something else, even though I don't want to. Right? No, we don't have to. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. The Zichu? Is that how I pronounce that? Is that how I pronounce that? But yeah, welcome, everybody. So yeah, we're playing some, um, calling it Mountain Diana, because we're going to have, we're having a Mountain Scryer. It's like a Targon deck. This puts me to 10. Bounces the Katarina. The Katarina should be before the Blade Twirler anyway. Definitely wish I had one more mana. Okay, cool. I was going to say for the Hush. For the Yasuo to keep it from having... Um, charger? Keep it from having the Quick Attack. I think the charger. So next turn we're going to have 8 mana plus an additional 1, so 9 mana. So we play like 1 on the charger, and then Diana, this. Yeah, let's just play the oh, yeah. charger. No, I think Diana's really good. I definitely lost a lot to a, a really big leveled up Diana. I think it's good. Alright, so they're getting rid of the spell shield. So now they can use something to stun that. Okay, or just use that. But still, Yasuo's gone. That's good. Unfortunately, my unspeakable horror is not killing anything. No, Katarina, if Katarina's in combat blocking, it will just die, in if, and if it would take lethal damage, it will just die in combat, and it will not, um, it will not level up and strike back. Dusk approaches. So I can either kill Katarina with the Diana, or kill the Fey Blade Twirler with the Unspeakable Horror and the Diana. I'm not sure which one of those two we should go after. No more lies. I guess the Katarina. I will be heard. Yeah, I guess the Katarina. Unspeakable Horror is just not killing anything. So I, I want this extra 2 1 in to just be another blocker. You know, because I need like a free blocker for like the Blade Twirler and stuff, because my weakest enemy is going to be getting stunned, and so that's going to be the Spacey Sketcher. The full moon awakens. 
awakens the soul. All right, that was three Nightfall cards just that turn. We hadn't played any Nightfall cards before that. No. All right, everything gets stunned again. Can't stop that. It's going to be more... <laughs> even more Blade Tour alert. That deny is looking pretty good that they denied. Oh, no. So I have to chump block both of those, and then I take 12. Well, I don't like that. I guess we're doing this. Not dead yet. And we have a Living Legends. That's actually a good card to draw. Because I can play that and still have 10 mana left. Um, Ridden Stars could find me like a Rillian Soul, but I'm not going to have the mana for that. I don't have the room for the Golden Sister. I guess the Traveler. So I still have 10 mana. I get to refill my mana with that. Take the high ground. We want things that say obliterate. I got the Scourge. So that obliterates one enemy. The Immortal Fire. They would have to have stun for the Immortal Fire, which is pretty likely. The Scourge doesn't have a spell shield, so they if I just play the Scourge and they stun the Scourge, then I'm in trouble. Come, a new phase awaits. Um, 13 mana. I wish it was 14. I wish I could fall in Comet and Immortal Fire. I guess it's just the Scourge. I can really only play like one of these top end cards. Oh wow. Um Night descends. I'm worried about playing the moon glow and then them responding with a with a stun card. Why would they not just play the stun card originally, though? I don't know. Yeah, it could be Steel Tempest, that's true. With the Minotaur Reckoner gone, I will have the Spacey Sketcher that can block. I dare you. Oh, come on. I guess I need to go with the moon glow. GG's. So I can't block both these fearsomes. I will not abandon my belief. But yeah, I had, I had ways to win if I would have got if I would have grabbed the elusive and also gave it a spell shield. Afterwards, that would have played around Steel Tempest. So, could have won with that. It's a good game. Clad in shining sun.
Sunlight. All right, Twisted Fate Swain. And again, we don't need to play the Spacey Sketcher right away. It just probably dies. We don't need to discard any of these cards. We're going to want to wait till we have either a better card to discard for it, or, um, you know, like maybe our, our Stalking Shadows with the Ephemeral Copy, maybe we discard that. Or if we need it to turn on Nightfall. Uh, but don't really need to discard it now. This is tough. Meteor Shower is going to be good against Twisted Fate. Killing Twisted Fate, killing that. Falling Comet would be better against Swain and Leviathan. I'll take the car I guess I'll take the Falling Comet, which is going to be better against those two. And, and if we need to, we can Falling Comet a Twisted Fate as well. If we need to. Yeah, I'm not I'm not very big on Spacey Sketcher. I don't really like the card, but it does play well um, in this deck, especially with like our Mountain Scryers that make the invokes cost less. Plays pretty well here. I'm just gonna play this 2 2. They will not escape punishment. Hush is a really good card to discard with Spacey Sketcher. I've whipped up something special. This is unfortunate. Alright, we're discarding that. So I want to have the Unspeakable Horror available for the Powder Keg, so I can't really play the Mountain Scryer because then I don't have the mana. Did you an Onlooker? Car can do some work. No mercy for heretics. <laughs> Wrong way. Back heretic. The guilty were bad. We could discard the onlooker as well. But usually, like the fleeting, the fleeting hush that we're not going to play anymore. That's usually the best card to discard. <clears throat> All right, more falling comets. Stone and star. Gives me another challenger for the Twisted Fate. Ill -met by moonlight. One that's not as easy to kill. So two mana doing two damage. I don't think they have anything two mana does two damage. They have two mana deals one damage. Devotion through battle. With Make It Rain. What do you got? See nothing left when I'm done. All right, hate seeing that. Man, I really don't have anything to play this turn. 
is not a good turn for me. So kind of expecting Leviathan. And... I was hoping for Leviathan. I'm gonna try because let's see if they still they could still play Leviathan. Possibly kill them with Diana this turn. That's kind of my plan right now. Stun two blockers. Obliterate another blocker. Attack. That's the plan. Alright, the plan's not gonna work. So while that plan's not going to work, we were peaceful once. still our, our stun two blockers plan still looks pretty good. I guess I could have played this before my Mountain Scryer died. No. Ah. Uh. My plan is they if they would have just guillotined this thing, they were dead. Cuz that was 7 plus the pill cascade 9. It's our time. Like this. Mm -hmm. You picked the losing side. Cool. Definitely be useful later. I do not want to see Twisted Fate. Twisted Fate, that like, kills me. They already played one Twisted Fate. Do not want to see Twisted Fate. Alright, at least Twisted Fate doesn't kill me as bad now. Keep up, keep up. Um, both the Immortal Fire and the Great Beyond. Both awesome. Uh, one cost eight, one cost nine. They both kind of do the same thing. Uh, kill the opponent. I'll just take the one that costs one less. Alright, Big Alfredo, take care. All right, so this is kind of a catch-22. Trading off my two man, like my two power things, that's bad for a really and soul level up. But this is very good against like Twisted Fate, Red Card, and Make a Rain, and all that kind of stuff. To actually have my bot, like actually have like these bodies trade, that's a that's good for all that kind of stuff. Um, so we could Pale Cascade, keep this thing alive. It'll be four, fifteen, sixteen. Um, if not, I'm just. Just getting more mana for falling comets and stuff. Next turn, we'll, just, we'll keep it alive. Diana's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I think I think according to the last patch update, Psychorillion Soul is gonna be changed a little bit. 
don't know what that's exactly gonna look like. Um, you know, it said like, like maybe something with like the level up condition for Aurelian Soul. They did talk about the level up condition for Yordle Grifter change, you know, that was something they were going to adjust. And as we saw with that, that wasn't really much of a change. Nine. It's been nine mana. All right, Rex is in here. So in thirty seconds, we'll see what happens after this animation. Oh, that one wasn't too bad. I guess technically the destroyer is bigger. And that can be that can be important. That little extra bit, extra bit. Like if they kill my Solari soldier, that also let me keep Equinox available if I would need to use it. Launcher Raven's Blocks. Alright. Gangplank Burn, that's that's the real popular deck with Misfortune and Gangplank. So this is 9 Overwhelm right now. I think we go... <clears throat> the Immortal Fire. Diana. So we can challenge the Sprayfin. No more lies. Face your heretic. Should just be game here with this immortal fire. There we go. The words of the heretic rang true. And yeah, definitely Will of Ionia. All right, speaking of Fiora, we are playing against Fiora. So I like how this deck has just such a low curve, but still has such an amazing late game, as we saw with those games right there. Or like really like that last game. Like we just have so much power with all this invoke that it's. It works out having a low curve in all the invoke. Again, we don't have, <clears throat> we have, we haven't had the attack token on turn one in any of these games. Um, this is one where it'd be nice to have the attack token turn three, where we could go Sketcher and then Diana. That's not how it's going to be. All the Dianas. I do like that because Diana's champion spell is amazing with, with it being Pale Cascade. Do you like having a bunch of Dianas? They would fall by my need. Let's either get rid of Lunari Priestess or Changes but never breaks. Embrace the night. So they have three mana. Cloaked in silver light. No more lies. Your heretic. I mean, they, they're going to be able to draw a spell, but that's still the best play. Oh, I, I should be attacking with the 3-2 also. I should be attacking into that. I hope they don't have Prismatic Barrier. That's the one card I don't want to see. No, don't have Prismatic Barrier. What are you doing? No, single combat. 
Our light grows brighter. I should be attacking with this three two also. Everything I've worked for. A gift from the river folk. The end result is a Fiora and a River Shaper down. I do have an additional card in hand than I do now. The balance requires a watchful eye. Sunlight guiding my brethren. Enforced equilibrium. Nature blesses her followers. My plan is, my plan is just a falling calm comet that thing. Single combat, single combats are good. Man, I can't talk. Ooh. Yeah, going for the obliterates just—it's a good option. Hush can definitely be really good in this matchup with all the barriers and everything. I like holding on. I'm not casting the Stalking Shadows because I want to be able to play that to be able to enable the invoke. Always two steps ahead. Um, I don't behold a Celestial card right now. But we will next turn. It's difficult not taking Cosmic Inspiration. Like, both of these, Supernova and Cosmic Inspiration, are awesome. Mind and open heart. <clears throat> I'll just take the Supernova. You're covered. Nature blesses her followers. <laughs> Just gonna hush the Fiora so it doesn't have Challenger either. They forced us to choose death or the blade. So even if they would want to use like another barrier on that, yeah, they can't because he doesn't have doesn't have Challenger. All right, I'll slow them down a little bit. Go give me another Celestial card. Um. Bask in her radiant blessing. We swim within the flows of magic. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with invokes. There's too many good choices. I know, right? I'm not going to have the mana to cast all these things. Oh, I played the ephemeral one. Whoops. I meant to play the regular one. Well, oh well. It's fine. Two worlds, one balance. Please don't have deny. Please don't have deny. Awesome. Sweep them away. Figure if we keep obliterating the two best things that we can each turn, that we're gonna be in a good spot eventually. You were misguided. You leave me no recourse. It's probably a protection spell. No, okay. What so they're just gonna draw. The water draw their spell, no protection. <sighs> Alright, GG's. Yeah, we just have all, like, we just have a million cards in hand. We already got rid of two Shens and two Fioras. Alright, let's see how we do against the aggro deck. We have the free star shaping as far as Nexus heal is concerned. We definitely want to see our Solari cards. Not that Solari card, the other Solari cards. For early interaction. Wow, these cards are all just so good. And they all cost one or two mana. It's hard to... Hard to get rid of them. Won't have any Nightfall stuff. We can we'll find something to play for Nightfall. See, there we go. Zero mana card for Nightfall. Good. The wiser. I'll block. Can I paint you? 
The thing is, they probably don't play something into this. Okay, they do. Cold and unforgiving as moonlight. That's gonna be another point of damage on my turn. Night my turn. Descends. Face your heretic. No fervor. Not done yet. I'm taking one of these two, Traveler or Warrior. 5-5 five, five Challenger next turn does sound pretty enticing. But so does invoking more cards. Sunlight guided, my brethren. Is there like any Nexus healing? Is there any Nexus healing in the invoke cards? I don't really think so, right? My spirit shines. Never mind. Now they see who I truly there is. am. They will know you in Who's angry for it? Jack the winner. I was thinking Gangplank. You know, didn't need to attack right away Gangplank because I wanted to challenge the Powder Keg. So basically all of our cards cost one or two mana. We generated a three mana card. We generated a six mana card, a four mana card. We drew one five, but this Lock one five is really good. Doors. Does help out. As far as playing a late game. Three for Gangplank. My complete. The light of my star warms the heavens. There's plenty of killing. Feeling yeah, pretty good about this. Let's go regular Pale Cascade. Cloaked in silver light. Yep, GG's. So that was number three for Diana. So I was gonna, like, on my turn, I was gonna play Stalking Shadows and then play another Pale Cascade, which would level up Diana. And then Unspeakable Horror would give Diana Challenger. I guess that wouldn't be Burst Speed anymore. Maybe not. So I wanted to give Diana the, the challenger burst speed. Vimer. Vyheimer with Targon cards. So this could be an invoke. You know, just like an invoke battle. Alright, we're gonna definitely keep my priestesses with their invoke. The Duskbringer does a good job of turning on Nightfall and stuff. Only a fool would enter battle unprepared. Um, no, I don't really think Nocturne's really that necessary in this deck. I don't think we have enough. Good turn, good turn. I don't think we have enough Nightfall for it. And we're really more of like a, a Targon Mountain Scryer kind of deck. Yeah, what is this? So let's go. Do I need to rid in stars to go find Aurelian Soul? No. I kind of want 
let's see. So the warrior challenges Heimerdinger and does just like some other good stuff. Meteor shower can also kind of kill Heimerdinger, but I think the warrior does a better job of picking off Heimerdinger. Gonna just be able to heal this thing with the gems. Chosen of the moon. Chosen of cowards and blasphemers. Then I have Pale Cascade to still kill this thing. I like them using those gems right now though. Promise of a new moon upon you, Bloom Tender. It's our time. I will be heard. Moonlight, guide me. And if they have another card, you know, Pill Cascade of their own, anything like that that keeps their thing alive, then yep, then they just do. We have another Diana back here. It's un unfortunate, but got five damage in. What's up, Kinkles? Yeah, good record today. I had a real good stream. Sunlight guiding my brethren. I'm gonna play my two Nightfall cards. I think I do that next turn and just play this, the Warrior. Her flowers bring the moonlight with them. Chosen of the moon. Chosen of cowards and blasphemers. So that's three for Diana? Yes. So one more will level up Diana. Obviously, we got two more here, of course. Let my stars guide all travelers onward. So that Solari Priestess turned into the Traveler. Which turned into something else. Alright, what are we Pale Cascading? So I can Pale Cascade Diana. Diana's gonna level up anyway. I don't want Pill Cascade like one of these other things that they won't that won't be killing stuff. Let's see. Come, our light grows bright. They tried to blind me with resplendence, but they could not break me. So now Diana deals dies to one damage things, but I'm not expecting them. I don't. I don't think there's like that much difference between being at one health and two health against them right now. Yeah, that's true. The Celestials do have really incredible card art, especially like the the real expensive ones, but still even like the Warrior here. Awesome card art. Cool. Doom Beast could definitely be useful. No more hiding. Face your heretic. So that's why I went with the the plus two plus one over here, got two damage on them. So it's basically get two damage on them and heal my one my one one to be a one two again. Or heal the Diana to just have two health instead of one health. And I just went with the two damage. What seems to be the problem? Kind of makes sense. Basically, all of our draws have been followers, so. We whiffed. When will this bloody conflict end? 
<clears throat> if this does just turn into a late game, like if Heimerdinger is able to stabilize and it turns into a late game, we're going to want this Living Legends. Yuck. Still yuck. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I've never seen it whiff for opponents either. Always whiff for me. I will have 10 mana next turn. I could cast Living Legends, which would give me 11 mana. It wouldn't it wouldn't give me like the extra mana gems. Heimerdinger did its job, traded with all this stuff, but that's still really big getting Heimerdinger out of there. We know a couple of these cards are 6 plus cost spells. Really wish I had the mana to display the cosmic inspiration right now. Quiet reflection begins. So let's see, after playing that we'll have seven mana. So we can have cosmic inspiration and a star shaping. If we want. Or we can go star shaping. Yeah, star shaping, star shaping. Could go Living Legends right now. We'll have one less mana. Yeah, it'll be nice to have that Cosmic Inspiration first. What's the seven mana thing? Barrier. take seven and then heal five. Good card for them. Yeah, definitely good card. Does a lot. That does so much. You know, leveling up Heimerdinger. I don't know why the five one's not attacking. But... Like the cosmic inspiration only costs four mana. So like, there's a good chance like with with um, the living legends that we can play cosmic inspiration and other stuff. That's the good part about it. I'm gonna take it. It just costs four mana. And one mana short from going Solari Priestess and Living Legends. One mana short. If I go this, we're two mana short from going Cosmic Inspiration and Living Legends. So I guess it's just Living Legends. Another cosmic inspiration. Uh, 
Still have six mana, perfect amount of mana for my three units. Um, but we could do this Meteor Shower. Try to take down Heimerdinger and something else. And then if we do, so if we do Meteor Shower, then we're looking at four mana. So like maybe like Trickster and Charger, or maybe Messenger, Charger, and... Oh. They have their own Cosmic Inspiration. Is there a 10 life? It reminds us there is always more to discover. A field of crystal structures of unparalleled rigidity! I hear thunder on the horizon. We may have to block with Heimerdinger to take down the Charger. Hey, we got three new subs. Thank you so much, Kitty Dexterity. Thank you for gifting out some subs. Everybody get some hype votes in the chat for our three new subs. Lucas, the Monkey Chief, and Naya Tunes. Thank you so much, Kitty Dexterity. Thanks for bringing that hype. I appreciate that. I don't really believe it makes too much sense to cast the Moonglow. So I feel like if we cast Moonglow, they could just respond with whatever. Welcome back, Big Alfredo. You just missed uh, three subs being gifted out. Yeah, I love it. Love all the hype boats in chat. Thanks, everybody. We'll go silence here. So I think they have to block with Heimerdinger, right? Yeah, they have to block with Heimerdinger. Oh, Heimerdinger can block the Solari Priestess. Well, they have to block. They have to block my Charger with Heimerdinger. Otherwise, they're dead. They can't make that block. It's five overwhelm plus another seven. Five plus seven is twelve. They're at ten. They have to have. They have to have their Heimerdinger die. Okay, or they'll just surrender. G G a four one for Mountain Diana, and this deck was a lot of fun to play, and I think this is really powerful. I um, there we go. So we went four one. Um, yeah, you know, our loss was really close too, but I I like how you know like look look we have nine cards that cost one, you know nine units that cost one, and then we have um, I guess we could just hit this thing. Then we have fifteen cards that cost two. And so, like, 24 out of our 40 cards cost 1 or 2 mana. That's 60% of our deck costs 1 or 2 mana. And then when you add on the things that cost 3, the other 8 cards that cost 3, we're looking at basically all of our deck. 75% um, of our deck costs 1, 2, or 3 mana. <laughs> so, you know, like, that's, that's pretty awesome. Um... So yeah, getting lots of Invoke. I like having the two Aurelian Souls at the top. I So like I said, like the popular version of this deck plays Leona, but I think that this is better than the popular version. Like they play Leona, and then they also play the a couple of the five mana, five, five, um, the Robin. And I just feel like Leona and Robin really don't do a whole lot. All they do is kind of just sit on the board, um, which which honestly, all, all the Invoke cards, they do what you want your Leona and Robin to do. Your Invoke cards do the same thing. And so, like, you really don't need those cards. Um, the Stalking Shadows was good for us overall. I know we whiffed that last time, but it's a it's another good way to turn on at Nightfall. Um, you know, works well with getting a lot of these Invoke cards, getting two of them. And it works well with Spacey Sketcher also. I liked that. Um, and, 
We're at three now, Kordak. Yeah, like those are the first three for today. Um, and then, uh, and then I like having the Aurelian Soul. Good question, Dahlia. I'll ask, I'll answer that in just a second. Um, then we have the Aurelian Souls at the top end that just go way over the top. And I think that's a better top end card than like Leona that doesn't really go way over the top. I think if you're going to have, like we, we have early game with the cards that we're playing. We got a lot of early game stuff. We have a ton of mid game stuff. It doesn't look like it, but we have a ton of four five, six mana cards with just all the invokes with the, with the priestess getting the invoke cards, your mountain scryers getting the invoke cards, star shaping, um, and then, of course, Spacey Sketcher. But, like, you know, so, like, we, we actually end up having a whole bunch of mid-game stuff. And so you want, like, that late-game things that can can really turn around games and, and win you some awesome late games. And that's what Aurelian Soul can do. So, yeah, if you like invoking, um, you want something a little different, give this deck a try. I definitely recommend this one. Tons of decisions to make. Um, and so you're not you're not going to win every game because sometimes you're going to make the wrong decisions because there are, each like, each one of these cards that you play you're going to be making a lot of decisions. All right, but there's Mountain Diana. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. Give this deck a try. Let me know how it goes for you. This definitely felt like one of the stronger decks we've played in the, the last few days. Um, so yeah, this one was really good. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Mountain Diana. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.